Hey there, everyone. This is Stephanie Shimerdla. Yes, that's how you say my very long and unique last name. I'm a freelance illustrator and concept artist, and I'm currently going through a whole bunch of studies from books and magazines and various sources um, in an effort to up my game a bit, so to speak. And I thought that I would start making some tutorials for you guys to be able to follow along and make use of the same stuff that I'm learning while I'm learning it. So this particular study was on painting armor, especially the textures involved and all the crazy things that light does on metal. Now, usually I would start with a sketch. Um, this time, however, the study that I was following, the tutorial that I was following, suggested blocking out shapes, which is what I'm trying to do at this point. I start with a basic black shape, and then I go through and refine or render slightly more complex shapes on top of it, keeping an eye on the upper right-hand corner thumbnail all the time, which is, I always keep it open to help look at the basic composition of a painting as I'm painting it. And um, I'm not really adding much detail, any detail at this point, especially because I start noticing that the proportions are off as I start to refine more and more. So you can see me start to draw some perspective lines uh, to try to get a better idea for it all. And eventually I end up going in and making a sketch based off, off of my original pose. But for now, what I'm doing here is just designing the armor, really. I'm trying out all kinds of different shapes and using about 30 to 40 references for plate armor that I found on museum websites and through also Google Images, but if you use Google Images, just be really careful about copyright issues. Don't copy anything. Use it as a reference or inspiration for your own designs. I want to try to make the armor unique, but also fairly functional. So you can see that I'm trying out some fur over his pauldrons, which I decide I don't like. Uh, different helmet shapes, a plume that I keep adding and removing throughout the entire painting process and uh, I just keep refining and changing. I think it's important to try out all kinds of stuff and let your imagination just kind of go wild at this stage because that's how you're gonna find the best designs in the end. The more stuff you've tried out, the better chances that it'll be more like what you were originally looking to create, I think. It can take some time, but I think it's worthwhile in the end and it's fun. You get to just create pure imagination. And this is the time to do it. You don't wanna to have to go back and fix it later once you've got all this detail added. So that's one of the main reasons that you build stuff up like this. And now you can see I've added a layer up on top that has a basic sketch of body shape on it so that I can start reshaping the knight beneath. I'm using the lasso tool to make selections on my knight who is all on one layer at this point. And then I'm using transform warp and transform distort to move things around and change perspectives and make it fit my sketch. Also, uh, when I'm making a big change like this, I like to duplicate the night layer in this case and then hide the one beneath, which was the original, and work on that new duplicated layer to make the changes so that I can then later just switch back and forth between the duplicated changed layer and the original layer to get a look at both of them to make sure that I like the changes that I made. And when you're comparing these, um, zooming out can be really helpful because it helps you to look at the basic shapes involved rather than letting your eye get caught up in any details. Okay, so now that I'm pretty happy with his proportions and the perspective and the overall composition of the image, I'm gonna go in and start adding some details. Now, I start out with this kind of really weird method of making chain mail, which involved making holes and circles and didn't work out very well because chain mail is made so that the circles link up and go under the neighboring circle so it's dark and hidden from view. So what I end up doing is going in and creating a new brush, which just happens to be one of my specialities. Brushes, that is. So I go in and I make a uh, about 500 by 500 image white background and paint some rough C shapes like this in black. Uh, then go in and create a new brush, which is edit, define brush preset. And you can delete this version of the brush afterwards. You're just creating it so that you can use it to edit the settings on it and then resave it. 
Then open your brush window, which is either window brushes or F5. Uh, then go under the brush tip shape and make the spacing so that they're spaced evenly. Then shape dynamics and make sure that you change angle jitter control to direction so that the brush changes direction depending upon the direction that you're painting. And then I go into the roundness jitter and scattering and add a very small amount of roundness jitter and scattering just so that they aren't the exact two C shapes every single time they get painted. It's an optional step, you don't have to do it. You can also optionally go under transfer and change it so that the opacity is slightly different or reacts to pen pressure. Uh, but if you do, make sure that you set a minimum amount to the jitter, somewhere around 40 to 50%, so that they don't become too see-through as you're painting them. And then if you want to save this brush, you can do so. I made my own chainmail brush set using two different brushes I made using the same technique, uh, just to save for future use. To uh, save this brush with all its new settings, go into the small menu in the upper right hand corner of the brush window and choose new brush preset. And then you can go back and delete that first brush that we made with no settings that were applied to it. And this is what the brush looks like. I'm using the brush on a new fresh layer by the way. Uh, you'll want to swipe it back and forth from right to left and then left to right and repeat alternating sides like that. And uh, try to make it so that the links or the C's don't all line up with one another. You can do this by changing how far out or in you start that line of C's. You want to vary it as much as possible for realism. Um, also make sure that you're painting it on a dark background since that C that is half the circle is supposed to be fading off into darkness. Then once you get these created, you want to go ahead and create some variance to the lighting on them to give them some shape. Um, I used the transform warp tool first on this to make it look like mine is a chainmail skirt and it changes the perspective on the edge ones to make it look like they're kind of curving around his leg. And then you can either use the dodge and burn tools to add lighting and shadow on the chainmail or you can make a new layer and then hold down the alt key, hover over the line dividing between the new layer and the chainmail layer and a downward facing arrow should appear. Then when you click, uh, this will create a layer with a clipping mask, which was easily one of the most important tricks that I learned when painting in Photoshop. Anything painted on this clipping mask layer will only show up if the layer beneath it that it's tied to is also visible there. So I'll use it to do painting for a while on my figure and then hide the visibility of that clipping mask layer for a second to make sure I like my changes. And then if I do, I merge the layers, create a new clipping mask layer and start painting again. So clipping mask layers are uniquely suited to especially this situation really. Um, it will keep you from painting outside of those seas. That way your highlights and shadows will only show up on the chain mail where it's visible. So now I am continuing with the time honored tradition of messing around with the armor until it's more to my liking. Uh, I try a bit of a dual tone to the metal and decide I don't really like it. Usually I will bring something that I'm trying just to the point that I can get an idea for what it'll look like fully rendered and then I decide to either keep it and continue on with the detail or not and scrap it. So now I'm adding some detail in the form of some etching and embossing on the metal, which I like quite a bit more. Uh, this is where the armor really begins to kind of take on a character of its own for me. I decide that I want it to be worn and beat up with some dents and scratches and nicks and cracks. Um, I also want some really high contrast to it, some really light lights and really dark darks. This will help to set him apart from that drab, dreary, misty background. Most of that etching, by the way, is kind of a bunch of scribbles with parts of it erased. Um, it, you can create actually a pretty detailed look to something, especially if you're going to be zoomed out like you are on the final piece by just doing some scribbles with highlights and darks, making sure that those highlights and shadows kind of line up so that if there's an indentation where the shadow is, there's also a highlight kind of alongside of it, and then erasing parts of it so that you don't have a continuous line of scribble. Um, it actually ends up looking pretty good. Just have to play around with it a little bit. 
His legs were also looking rather plain to me and I still hadn't decided what to do with them. So I'm trying more stuff here. But ultimately I decided upon a theme for his armor, which is based off of the kind of spiky elements to the gauntlets and van braces. So I carry that over to the greaves and whatever that knee element is called, which I never learned and have just looked up, decided that the word was way too difficult to try to pronounce and am promptly moving onward from this discussion so as not to embarrass myself further. <clears throat> so another important thing that I'm learning is the importance of ways to lead the viewer's eye to certain parts of your painting. Uh, detail can draw the eye, sharp edges versus blurred edges can work, contrast can draw the eye, darkness or dark blocks of shapes near the edge of a painting can deter the eye from roaming right out of the painting, which is an important part of keeping a viewer visually engaged. As soon as their eye leaves the painting, they're probably done with it. So. I add some darker dust along the bottom right corner of the image. It will serve to both lower the contrast as well as darken up that area. Uh, the eye should roam down to hopefully about his knee thingies, maybe mid shin. Knee thingies is the new technical term for those as far as I'm concerned, by the way, <laughs> and no further. Maybe their eye will wander over to the cape and then back up. I didn't really map out a route for the eye to take on this one, but that's never a bad idea. However, given that this study was about armor and not composition, I'm playing it fast and loose compositionally. <laughs> okay, that was a lot of rambling just to tell you about some dust, but hopefully it was helpful. On to the weapon. I played around with all kinds of effects to add to this halberd. Most of them I edited out because this is already getting long. Ultimately though, I decided that uh, most of them were detracting from what should be the main focus of this painting, the badass dude. Sure, no badass dude is complete without a badass weapon, but I needed it to be badass without being distracting. The cracking slash lava effect was added using the same way I make all of my lava, by the way, uh, using that clipping layer that I mentioned earlier. I'll start with a base dark red color, on a new layer and paint the basic shapes of the cracks or lava. Then I will add several new layers on top of it, holding down alt to make them clipping layers to the layer beneath and start painting in with oranges and yellows and add the lighter areas. Um, you wanna be sure to let some of that red show through and then some of the orange show through, et cetera, et cetera. I will oftentimes use overlay or color dodge layer styles with the orange and yellow layers, by the way. Uh, play around with the layer styles until it looks how you want. Then I add another layer on top of all of it and paint with a very low opacity soft edged brush, some red kind of glowy effects. I'll make sure that this layer isn't a clipping layer, by the way. The glow should extend out around the edges of the cracks. You'll also notice that I added a lot of embers flying through the air and then later on the dirt that's flying up from the bottom. Uh, these particles can help to create a sense of movement in the painting. Um, but by the way, I'll get back to those in a second. If you'd like to follow the rule of thirds, uh, which I'm only kind of loosely following in this one, you can use view new guide layout and set the number of columns and rows to three. And that was gonna break up your canvas into thirds to allow you to place important items somewhere around where those lines intersect. Uh, in my case, it's his pauldron because shoulders are important. Actually, given that the armor is the point of this exercise, I figured I would put that nice huge pauldron, which is easily the biggest piece of his armor, right along one of those uh, intersecting lines. But back to the embers. I'm creating these moving particles uh, by painting blobs around the screen and then using blur, motion blur. Uh, make sure that angle is set to the direction that you want the particles to be moving and voila. To continue our foray into senses of movement, I wanted to try to make it look like his cape was perhaps fluttering. So um, that would create kind of a red blur along that line of movement. And that's what I was doing here. Notice that I'm also flipping my canvas back and forth horizontally to make sure that things look right. Most of you have probably heard of this trick, but it basically helps you to look at your painting with a fresh eye and to catch things that you've kind of grown blind to. 
And now I'm working on the details, which has easily been my favorite part of the painting process in the past. I'm pretty left-brained and perfectionistic for a painter, so I love to just zoom in and work on these details. It takes a lot for me to wait until the end to get started on them, but I seem to have finally trained myself. As a last step, I usually go in and make a selective color adjustment layer and a levels adjustment layer to tweak colors and contrast. I also brightened up the blue in the sky a bit to add a tad more color to what is largely a desaturated palette and decided to call it a day. I've learned what I can about armor and will feel much more comfortable painting it in the future. Ultimately, that's the biggest thing we can all do to improve. Practice what we want to improve. <laughs> So that's the reason for my studies. I hope that you subscribe to my channel and follow me along as I do them so that we can learn together. They will be building upon each other, by the way, so I won't be going over the same stuff over and over again. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Bye.